I'm here with Marzi, musician. Uh, we're going to talk about music library, but first of all, uh, we just figured out that we both went to the Manas probably 20 years ago. Yeah, a little while back. Uh, one, one of the most days. amazing clubs yeah. I've been to. Yeah, yeah. Converted Manor House. Yeah, just outside of Bournemouth. Amazing. <laughs> really good and time. And you played there? Played there once, yeah, did a warm-up set. What, what would you have been playing, house? It would have been more like a progressive house, like an old Sasha Digweed, Renaissance, that type of vibe. My favourite. You said you were sort of that Renaissance... Yeah. Started yeah, right. acting out sort of early. I went actually to Matcham's, um, the uh, Fantasia at Matcham, so that was more the early rave scene. Then I, I was DJing a lot and I got more into sort of more progressive house, Sasha Bigweed, and that was where, like, for an early part of my career, I was just basically doing a lot of uh, DJing, all vinyl, yeah. nice long mixes, you know. Old school. We were saying earlier about long transitions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Seamless. Yeah. Yeah, all vinyl. Yeah, very much. I mean, it's all about trying to create the third track in between two tracks to have a nice long transition. And, you know, it's a lot different to probably how we do it now, less sort of transition effects, much more smoother. That's still what I do now. I still enjoy that. How much do you get to play vinyl still? I still play vinyl a lot. I have my like my own collection in my room. I, you know, that's at home. But I, I tend to obviously do all of my mixing now with digital. Yeah. I've moved to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> on the light side, yeah, depending yeah, on how you look at yeah, it. I'm a techie. I, I think I've moved on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, did you did you take any of your vinyl over to digital? Did well, you I've got quite a lot of that. Uh, actually, uh, generally, I've repurchased uh, you know, digitally. But now I play more melodic progressive house like and junior and junior deep type stuff so yeah. different to what i have on vinyl although i get a lot of um influence from my old vinyl in the productions i do so i produce as well and where do you uh, play mostly so mainly at the moment i'm doing a weekly radio show community radio and i'm actually focusing more on the actual production side now so uh, not playing out as much as I used to, yeah. focusing more on uh, the, uh, the production side. And uh, so let's, uh, we're going to talk about music library and uh, prepping your tracks. So, which uh, you said Beatport, do you mostly use Beatport? Do you Generally, I, per I, I purchase via Beatport, I use Recordbox, uh, so I'm more pioneer based. Yeah. Um, in terms of library selection, my process is quite lengthy. I, I have quite a long process that I go through. Because uh, I produce as well, I, I look for reference tracks. So I'm listening to a lot of music. And what I tend to do is I repost on SoundCloud over a period. Uh, quite a lot. I'll be listening to loads and loads of tracks. I might like a lot on Spotify. And then those that I want to repost, I repost. And how I prepare my sets is I go through my history of reposts. And based on the sort of theme of a set, I'll, I'll pick those and I'll purchase them from people. Nice. So you go through your, so you're listening on SoundCloud, yeah. stuff you like, you like it, you repost it, yeah. and then when it's come to, time to do a set, you're like, okay, I'm going to go through my history, because yeah. I liked it then, I'm going to like it now, and you yeah, pick yeah. out the stuff that's relevant. To yeah, so a lot of my sets will be, it could well be six or 12 months ago, the music I plucked, but I quite like that, because it's, it, it means it's not, I'm not just playing the latest immediate releases. I will bring in some that might be more current, but I like going back through the history. The other thing I do is um, a lot of I listen to a lot of live um, uh, uh, mixes, mixtapes on mix from, cloud. yeah, on Mixcloud or YouTube of artists that I really like, yeah. and they often like list out their tracks. So the ones that I really feel, I'll take those, repost them, yeah. buy them, put them in a set. Nice, got it. And so once you downloaded your stuff, uh, how are you sorting stuff in a folder on your computer and then into? Yeah, generally I create a, a, a playlist per per week, so I do a weekly radio sh uh, slot. Yep. So I'll create that set. Generally, I'll look at it. I tend to go start with a more low, like 122 BPM and sort of build them, usually finishing with a bit of melodic breaks. So generally go with BPM and then look at the key. I don't really use a lot of the shortcuts or I'm very much like old school, listen to the tracks if they blend well. I usually can feel the key. I know it anyway from music theory and from being a producer. So yep. I just pick tunes up blend well and do nice transitions. Really. So do you use the analysis in Recordbox? The key? Yeah, so generally, yeah, to get... I like to lay the BPM in order and, and just generally look at uh, the key. The key is quite important to, yeah. to quickly work out if you think those tracks won't. If you're doing it quickly, it's quite a good help to see if the track won't work. But I'll always use my ear and just play it 
I'll prep the set and if a couple of tracks don't gel, I'll swap it around. And, and usually working between 12 or 13 tracks, it tends to work out. And presumably with the radio show, uh, that you're not vibing off the audience, so you might switch things around a bit, but you've got a reasonably structured format. For yeah, generally they're quite well prepped. The sets are well prepped in advance and I do it on a Sunday night, so it's not not really a major live kind of audience, but I'm, I'm working Do you put track. cue points in your tracks for your long transitions or you sort of feel it as you go? I, you know, I'm just so old school for me. Like, um, I've listened to so much records as a kid, as I grew up. I know, like, most producers follow a set pattern and you can just hear it and you know it. Yeah. So key points help if you've got that background like I have, it's like really, I prefer just winging it a bit. Oh, and uh, when you're producing your own tracks, do you add in all your metadata and categorize everything? Yeah, generally I'd like to use, like where I have releases coming out, I have a couple of tracks coming out in June and July, so they will be included in my sets as I get a chance to promote my own on the radio show. Yeah. And yeah, they're all labeled and uh, like, I, I sort of analyze them in record box as well nice and it's a good what i call the mix test so sometimes my productions aren't quite at the level that some of my favorite tracks are and that's a good way of me testing out where i'm at with my productions interesting yeah nice. yeah nice. call it the mix test no nice. the mix <laughs> test i like it yeah cool okay and then do you uh, do you sometimes play out uh, parties and yeah it's a little bit more sort of social friends but um that's something post lockdown obviously it hasn't really for yeah. me i've been focusing more on music production, production. Yeah. um but yeah now i've got more tracks that are actually mine coming out i'm yeah. starting to start uh getting uh, interesting DJ and out get back out in the world yeah yeah exactly yeah. look forward to it it's so nice yeah, to yeah. talk to you Miles thank, thank you, you yeah. very much yeah, it's a pleasure <laughs> nice to meet you cheers <laughs>